Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be looking at messages from your higher self. So what guidance does your higher self have for you about a particular area of your life, maybe something you've been concerned about, something that has come up, something you've been trying to work through. There are three groups to choose from. Group one is this Celestite, along with this group of cards. Group two is the Quartz Point, along with this group of cards. And group three is the Amethyst Cluster, along with this group of cards. So if you want to take a moment to center, focus on your breathing, and feel whichever group, maybe multiple groups, or perhaps all of the groups that you're most drawn to, I'll give you a minute to make your selection and then we'll get right into it. And there are timestamps in the description box of the video for each group if you would like to jump ahead, which I do recommend using so that you can skip over me shuffling cards in between groups to clear the energy of the group I've just read for and tap into the energy of the group I'm about to read for. So I'll give you a minute, please use the timestamps and then we will get into the messages. Hi, group one. You chose the Celestite along with this group of cards, which I'll look at in a minute. This will be the guidance from your higher self. I'm going to start with a little bit of tarot to get kind of a feel about what area of your life your higher self has some guidance for you about, some advice, words of wisdom. Okay, so we have the Wheel of Fortune and the mantra on the bottom of this card in this tarot deck, each card has its own mantra, is I trust whatever the universe brings me. Got the Eight of Pentacles and the mantra is I dedicate myself to what I believe in. Page of Cups, I am as young as I choose to feel. Three of Pentacles, when I show my work, others give support. Ten of Pentacles, I celebrate everything I achieve. And Two of Wands, I focus on what I want and make it happen. 
So this could definitely, with all of this Pentacles energy here that's coming through, um, so relating to the material world, even to finances, money, and career, um, and with the Wheel of Fortune, this could be some of you who are considering a change in career, a change in jobs, um, maybe even taking some kind of a hobby and turning that into a source of income for yourself. For some of you, maybe considering moving out into the realm of being self-employed, um, even some kind of maybe an art form that you have and you've been hesitating about um, really presenting that to the world. Maybe this is something you've been working on for a while. For some of you, it can be writing a book um, and you're kind of right at that end stage of that process. You've put in a lot of work, you put in a lot of, of time, effort and dedication and there could be some trepidation on your part as far as submitting that to publishers or to editors maybe some people that you have had kind of read your work up to this point um, have really you know had some criticisms or some critiques that um, you could have taken very personally it might have to do with even just the method of delivery that these people had maybe not um, taking into consideration feelings or being very compassionate but just being very kind of direct and detail oriented somehow missing um, maybe more of the artistry of your work or some of the larger themes at play that is in some way caused some kind of a fear or diminished the confidence in which you set out into this venture um, initially with. With the Two of Wands, this can definitely be this energy of, um, you know, encouraging you to understand first and foremost that you have the power in your hands to make the changes in the world that you wish to see. Um, this is really an emphasis that you do have some skill, you do have some ability here. Um, your efforts have not been in vain, even if this proves to just be a learning experience. Maybe with the example of kind of those critiques that have come in, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be with writing or with a book. It could be anything that you may have kind of suggested or hinted at, um, some kind of an urge that you have to branch off on your own or to again turn some kind of a hobby um, into a full-time job maybe this is if you are a student um, switching your course your course load switching your major and maybe you've presented this idea to friends and family who might have tried to discourage you saying you've already put in a lot of work you've invested a lot of work um, or maybe what you're thinking about kind of switching your focus to you've gotten some feedback or some pushback that that might not be the most financially sound decision it'll be something that's not necessarily is lucrative or it'll be a little more of a difficult path to success um, and so kind of this this feedback that you've gotten with this page of cups it's definitely um, kind of planted those those seeds of doubt within you doubt within that heart space it's kind of um, dimmed your enthusiasm a little bit or, or led to some kind of uncertainty with that page energy this kind of immature energy here feeling that you don't necessarily have all the information to make the best decision or um, that you don't you know fearing that you don't have what it takes to succeed in whatever the, this venture is but it's something also with the two of wands that you may have researched a lot you may have planned a lot about um, if this is something that you're actually physically creating you may have invested a lot of time in doing research about um, what's necessary maybe to start your own business to kind of venture out on your own or if it's in terms of you know choosing um, a new career path or a new course of study you might have done a lot of research and investing time and effort into kind of looking into that what's entailed with that what's the timing what's the cost um, what does that kind of blanket theme what can that lead to in terms of opportunities for yourself um, and so with this wheel of fortune this can also really talk about um, maybe something that's wrapping up or coming to a close in your life this could be something even where um, maybe at the job that you work, there's a lot of downsizing that's happening or kind of a restructuring that has occurred. Um, you're not really, you might've gotten some kind of a demotion or a pay cut and it's caused you to kind of set your sights elsewhere to understand something needs to give. Um, you could be under a lot of pressure, kind of putting in a lot of this work single-handedly with three of pentacles and eight of pentacles. Um, that's kind of like the individual focus of the work. Um, and you know maybe people on your team are not, um, you know contributing as much participating as much and it's causing you to feel very overwhelmed feel very put upon um, with this ten of Pentacles here feeling like you have all of that weight and all of that responsibility and so much riding on that um, and so you're kind of setting your sights elsewhere for different opportunities also with that ten of Pentacles and Wheel of Fortune um, you could be kind of hesitating from taking a leap of faith out to, into the unknown um, putting yourself out there in some way maybe switching careers because of all these responsibilities that you have people 
um, a family, for example, that's dependent on the source of income that you have now, but it's just leading to a lot of stress. It's not something that is in alignment with where your heart is calling you um, to go and to explore. It's, it's not you know, leading to a lot of this satisfaction. It might pay well, but it's something that's really diminishing your, your quality of life and really adding to your stress level overall something that when you look to the long-term future of that, the prospect of maybe sticking with this particular job for several more decades, um, you know, till you reach that point in retirement, it's just, it's a very daunting and depressing kind of thought or feeling. Um, but then this urge to maybe switch careers, to look elsewhere, there's this uncertainty about um, how are you going to make the ends meet? A lot of people that are, you know, very dependent upon you, even financially, and how to, you know, really kind of orchestrate that and make that work. So it feels very much like you're on the precipice of change with Wheel of Fortune. Some of these changes could be external that are kind of forcing you to reevaluate what you're doing in the material world, how you're making your money. Um, for others of you, this is just kind of this, this internal nudge, this, this kind of um, longing within you, within the heart space here to um, that whatever you are investing your time in, maybe you've had a spiritual awakening um, and your whole kind of worldview has shifted and what you were doing for a living, the kind of life you were leading prior to this awakening, it no longer resonates with you. There's this urge to, to do something more, to do something um, greater with your time to give back in a meaningful way to create some sort of legacy or something that's of a, a tangible and meaningful nature um, but then this this kind of hesitation this you know this urge of not really knowing how to do that or maybe just needing that extra little bit of confirmation to you know go forth with your plans to kind of put yourself out there um, the hard work that you have invested has not been in vain and kind of the the winds of change are around you circumstances outside of you changing just kind of this this perspective within you also shifting in terms of what resonates for you, what feels good, and what you're feeling most drawn to do. So I'm going to take a look at these cards now for you, group one, and this will be the guidance from your higher self about this situation. Okay, we have, I know that I am the only person who can bring forth the creativity that lives in my body. I am magic. So that's a beautiful confirmation there. If this is some kind of um, creative endeavor that you are considering putting out there to the world, maybe not even looking at it at this point as, you know, this this primary source of income, but just something that you've been working towards, something, some skill you've been honing, something you've been crafting or creating um, that you're you're kind of right at that point of giving birth to it. But then that fear, that hesitation of of what if it's not understood? What if it's not accepted? What if it's not good enough that that's really setting in and and kind of um, causing that hesitation in you to take this next step or you know the nearer that you that you come to that next step this kind of hesitancy this holding back kind of that that excitement is, is being kind of replaced with this anxiety and so from your higher self you're really being uh, reassured here that you have a very unique song to sing these skills and abilities and interests that you have are are not by mistake um, there is a purpose to this this calling this longing that you have for some of you you have a, sh a story to tell um, to share in any number of ways that can be writing that can be some form of artistry something to do even with um, kind of with dance or with music and with this reference to magic here this is all about manifestation um, this is your higher self encouraging you that you know this this desire that you have coupled with the the efforts that you've put in and understanding that even after that initial point of kind of giving birth to whatever this thing is presenting this thing bringing it out into the light um, that the work doesn't stop there that you know there'll be there'll be new challenges and new opportunities which present themselves to you um, um, things which you're going to have to learn to be really flexible about, you're going to have to um, kind of bend and accommodate to. Maybe that's in the point of, you know, something you submit, um, uh, some writing, a book, for example, and an editor comes back with feedback, um, understanding that, you know, it can, when you give birth to a, a project like that, it's something that, you know, it's obviously can be very close to your heart. There can be a tendency to kind of um, take offense to that or in some way view that as, as kind of a, that feedback as, as kind of a 
um, a gauge of your merit as a creative person or your merit as a writer. Um, but this is really encouraging you to, um, you know, try to shift beyond that and and recognize that some of the feedback that you're getting, it's coming from a place of honesty. Um, and it might, the nature of it or the person who's delivering that feedback or that critique, um, it might not be in their nature to necessarily wear kid gloves um, or it might not be their role or purpose if this is like a professional editor. Um, they're not going to want to take your feelings into consideration. Their, you know, their point and their purpose is to give you very structural feedback um, so that something can be marketable, so that something is more tight and concise. Um, and so kind of taking that perspective, shifting away from that, that inclination to self-criticize or self-question and, and recognizing that, you know, perhaps the input or the feedback, that it will help your project or your endeavor to kind of reach a wider audience, to be more well-received, um, to package that more neatly in a way that is able to be accessed and understood by others. Um, understanding as well that, you know, this, again, this drive that you have, this urge that you have in the work that you have put in, um, it will pay off. There, there will be at least learning experiences from that for a lot of you also with this Ten of Pentacles. Um, there's some degree of success or you will at least be aligning yourself through that first step with that path to success. That through continuing that effort and that focus after taking that initial you know, kind of first step out there, first coming out on stage or coming out into the light in whatever, you know, way that resonates for you with this, whatever this particular circumstance is. Maybe it's putting in resumes, um, you know, responding to ads in terms of jobs in other fields. Maybe it's signing up for a class that's in something other than your major if you're a student. That first step um, will definitely provide some kind of a resonance for you um, at the soul level in terms of, you know, the way you're received, your ability to perform in that capacity capacity on that in that stage um, and then just kind of the other windows of opportunity that open for you people you encounter um, kind of like the example of a class you know the the next level up then in that or, or kind of the the follow-up lecture from that same professor or, you know just whatever it is that it opens you up to this whole new catalog of kind of exploring and, and digging deeper in there so really this this guidance to kind of look at the bigger picture um, to not necessarily allow that voice of fear to hold you back um, and to expect the best results, but to understand that it might also be kind of a, a shaky process to get there, kind of a process of needing to balance things out before you really acclimate to this new situation, this new way of being, this new skill set, this new way of communicating um, your authenticity to the world. And we also have trust what you need is there. With love, all can be accomplished. So this is really talking about um, following that call of your heart. And for some of you where, you know, you're worried about what can this new venture lead to in terms of financial stability, in terms of responsibilities that you have to meet, obviously taking those things in a practical um, level, you know, really taking into account what are your, what are your basic expenses? What are some things that you can maybe cut back on or cut out of your life in order to make that financial strain a little less um, profound upon you can help you in navigating through this process and kind of those growing pains as you are you know adjusting to this new situation or you're really putting yourself out there and kind of in that that process of waiting sort of planting that seed of putting something out there and waiting for it to germinate to take hold and kind of um, reverberate back the the energy of maybe um, some kind of financial abundance to you some kind of praise or acclamation and encouragement to continue forth with that um, trust is a really big factor also at this point your higher self wants you to know to again trust in um, your inclination your urge your drive in a particular direction something that's calling to you trust that you know the time and the resources and the and the research and the effort that you have put into this endeavor at the, up to this point in time that will be a source of foundation Foundation. This will be a source of support for you. You have equipped yourself. You are in this process of equipping yourself with what you need to, to really survive and navigate in this new environment um, or in this new endeavor that you're kind of opening the door to. We also have Radiant Goddess Acceptance. You are an amazing goddess, ready to fully understand how significant you are. Tap into your power by owning your beauty and potential, by not making any apologies for it. 
So this is really talking about um, your higher self wanting you to know that you don't need to justify the call of your heart, what resonates with you to anyone. Um, if this is, you know, a calling that you are responding to, this was not a conference call. Um, it doesn't matter if other people don't understand, if they don't get it, if they, if they, they can't see this bigger picture that you can. Um, you're really being tasked at this point also with that reference to trust, to really, you know, surrender to that, surrender to that call. Um, take that first step, follow that opportunity and, and windows of opportunity and doors of opportunity that present themselves. Um, follow that train of, of thought, that idea, these synchronicities. They're leading you somewhere for a very particular purpose. Um, and this reference to goddess, this can, you know, aside from gender, goddess, you know, this feminine energy, this receptive, this magnetization energy, um, your higher self wanting you to know that you are worthy of receiving a claim. You are your work, your creation, your, your idea, idea, your dream, what you're being called to do or, or switch into. It's worthy of recognition. It's worthy of appreciation. You do have what it takes and you are deserving of kind of adding a little more color to your life, not living in, in such a, a kind of a dimly lit and, and a mundane existence, a limited existence where you're sort of held back by fear and just sticking into a comfort zone. Um, there's a world that is beckoning to you on the other side of that fear. Um, and it's something which, you know, some of you may even have some blocks or resistances to um, abundance um, some kind of fears or a lack mentality surrounding um, money and even, um, you know, abundance of all different sorts, um, kind of a lack mentality as far as recognition, feeling you're not good enough, you're not as good as other people, the tendency to compare yourself to others, um, others who have made it, others who have achieved some degree of fame or notoriety. And when we do that, we we're unable to really see that everyone has a starting point. Everyone has a point where they are a novice. And it is through time and effort and diligence that one is able to then um, come to a place of mastery. You're able to become that adept. Um, you know, it's not just the overnight sensation um, in terms of, you know, creative pursuits or, or writing or even a new career path that you're setting out on. Um, you will be starting from the ground up, but it's something that you do have what it takes to continue to push through, to continue to persevere, um, to continue to break through those ceilings that present themselves to you. Um, and kind of each level of, of mastery that you achieve, starting first with, uh, you know, mastery of self, mastery of that, that layer of fear that's holding you back, that opens up the door to a new series of kind of challenges and, and blessings that are available, they're there for the taking. Um, you know, you're, you're ripe to really receive this abundance, to receive this success, to receive this recognition. So for some of you, you may need to kind of look deeper into that, into that, face some kind of um, shadows within yourself or kind of extract that root of where you may be feeling a lack mentality, a lack of worthiness of, um, you know, having success in any number of ways, even kind of um, maybe some critics in your life who don't necessarily understand that dream and have been discouraging you. Um, now might be the time to kind of try to silence those voices internally to really cut the cords with um, so sort of the ideas and limitations that are implanted in you through those interactions, through those other people's feedback, um, learning to really tap into your heart, into your higher self and trust that, trust the universe and the guidance and the nudges that you are getting, um, that you are receiving this for a reason. You're being compelled in a certain direction for a reason. Something has really sparked your interest or is really urging you forth in a particular direction, maybe even changing course from what you've been doing perhaps for a long time for work, for example. Um, you're really being called for this, um, onto this path for a particular reason that will reveal itself in time. And we also have intuitive nudges. Intuition is the language of the soul. We are all born aware with a profound sense of inner knowing. Intuition is one of the greatest gifts we possess, which keeps us connected to our higher selves, the universe, and to our divine spirit. So that's a beautiful closing message from your higher self, group one. And again, just really encouraging you to trust in that nudge, trust in the call that you have received, something that has really sparked your attention or drawn you um, to it, something you've been working on, even in the form of, you know, just working through plans and pep 
preparations within your own mind, daydreaming about this, maybe doing a little bit of research. Whatever level of effort you've put in up to this point in time, it has not been in vain. And whatever next step is presenting itself to you, or you've kind of reached that, that end goal with um, the ways in which you've been applying efforts to this thing up to this point in time, and now's the time to really take that, that step, that, that next, you know, take it out into the next level in whatever way that might be. Um, and so you're again really um, encouraged here also with this imagery with this you know the eyes the physical eyes are closed but then this kind of um, this inner eye this pineal gland this the third eye is wide open and it's you know it's sitting here at the at the seat of the the crown chakra so tapping into that that higher awareness that higher self um, you know trying as much as possible to um, kind of mute the voices of naysayers in your life um, you know, just focusing on the best possible outcome for yourself, um, understanding that, you know, people who might not understand or support your dreams at this point in time, it's, you know, it doesn't say anything about the quality of them as people. It's just, again, this wasn't a conference call. This is a call that you have received, um, you know, very privately, and it's something that's meant only for you. And, you know, through really choosing that, choosing to answer that call and applying your efforts and then the success in a variety of ways that will come from that, in time, these people will start to understand. They'll start to see that bigger vision that at this point in time, you can imagine it's in your mind and you're in the process of fleshing it out into reality. Um, and so as much as possible, you know, hear what other people are saying, understanding that it is coming from a place of, you know, most likely trying to be helpful. For some people, it is kind of, you know, a jealousy or an envy um, that, you know, you are daring to do something different, maybe a particular skill or set of skills that you possess that, you know, other people around you or in your life or you come into contact with, um, they're failing to recognize kind of their own unique series of talents and gifts. And it's just, you know, that kind of speaks of wounds within themselves. So, you know, just kind of taking what works from what you're hearing, the feedback that you're getting and letting the rest go um, is really crucial at this point in time so that you can continue to focus on and keep, you know, firmly in your mind, this vision, this dream that you have. And um, really one of these gatekeepers at this point is the task of moving through that fear, taking that leap of faith, um, regardless of if you're able to see or anticipate what lies in the other side of that, but really operating with a, from a place of trust that there is something to be gained and learned from that experience of taking that leap of faith. So I'm going to get a few little um, kind of affirmations for you, group one, some closing words about this. Okay, and we have, I release fear of the unknown. I can move forward with energy and enthusiasm. So that is a great affirmation of what I was just saying about, you know, the task at hand now is to acknowledge that fear, recognize that fear, um, even fear that is being projected on you from others who want you to stay in a comfort zone or, you know, who can't see this vision that you have. They can't, you know, they can't see the forest through the trees. Um, they're operating from their own perspective. Um, this is something where you know you may have to, for a certain point, go this journey alone um, with just kind of the your higher self guiding you, the universe guiding you, and you will come into alignment with people in situations who see what you're doing, who get what you're doing, who recognize that, who can offer you words of um, support and constructive criticism. You will align with these things. Um, you have something wonderful within you that's waiting to be birthed, whether that's a creative project or some kind of a new even career path and just, you know, it can be something, it doesn't even have to be anything dramatic. It can be, you know, switching offices, switching employers and the ways in which your new work environment, maybe that's not as toxic, not as stressful, you're appreciated more, you're paid more. That helps to raise your vibration, um, which then emanates out and, and really helps to kind of raise the vibration of those around you. It helps, you know, you, you're a source of joy to others around you, to the world around you, as opposed to um, really radiating kind of that negative negativity or that hopelessness. And so there's something very important about whatever it is that you're being called to do in some way, large or small. You're now at this crossroads of kind of remaining in that stuck, um, lower density vibration of fear or kind of walking through that door and, you know, through that first simple action followed by, you know, a continued belief and further action from that point, you're actively then raising your vibration, which will help bring in and magnetize to you um, opportunities and people and situations and experiences that kind of mirror and match um, that heightened vibration. So let me get one more of these little affirmations for you, group one. 
Okay, and we have surprises, venture down the rabbit hole. So again, beautiful kind of final confirmation for you about taking that chance, that leap of faith. Um, I think you'll be really surprised at sort of the results that you see on the other side of that, whatever you can imagine as sort of the pinnacle of success or you know whatever you're hoping to achieve in some way, this is going to exceed your expectations. Um, I feel for a lot of you, this is gonna lead to some kind of a material abundance, some kind of an opportunity, but in other ways, it's gonna provide you peace, inner peace, and a sense of joy that you weren't necessarily, even a sense of acceptance or, you know, aligning with people that are like-minded, that see you and appreciate you in a way that you are unaccustomed to. Um, it's going to pay, this experience is going to pay back in dividends and kind of on a multifold level for you. So this is a very exciting time and you're definitely guided to acknowledge that fear and, you know, take small steps, small consistent steps to walk through that door of fear and, you know, really trust that on the other side of that, something wonderful is waiting for you. So those are your messages, group one. I hope that they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I also sell handmade jewelry and some divination tools in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out as well. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well. Hi, group two. You chose the quartz point along with these cards, which I will take a look at in a minute. This will be the guidance from your higher self. I'm gonna start with some tarot to get a feel about what area of your life your higher self wants to address today, has some guidance for you about, some words of wisdom or encouragement. Okay, and in this tarot deck, each card has a little mantra at the bottom, which I will read as I go through them. We've got the Nine of Cups, I trust in the flow of life. Ace of Cups, I welcome new love and trust what it brings. Four of Cups, I listen to my heart and follow my knowing. Nine of Wands, I am strong for as long as I need to be strong. Ace of Swords, I am ready for a breakthrough to success. And Judgment, I look back with compassion for myself. 
So with all of this cups energy, this definitely looks to be in regards to matters of the heart. With the four of cups, you may have experienced um, a very difficult breakup um, or a difficult situation in your romantic life. Um, maybe a feeling of, you know, not being able to really connect with somebody, um, feeling very unlucky in love, not being able to find anyone you really connect with or that you resonate with, um, maybe several or a lot of false starts with people, just not being able to really get things off the ground or with one person in particular, um, time and effort and energy invested and um, kind of a sense of that really maybe going to waste. Um, could be a situation even of some kind of unrequited love or sort of a repeated series of that. Um, people that you felt a connection with that just weren't able to meet you at that level, weren't able to reciprocate. Um, with the Nine of Wands, there's a sense of kind of hardening your heart, closing down a little bit um, to the idea of love, maybe developing some kind of a, a pessimism or even a hopelessness. Um, maybe having gone through some difficult or toxic cycles with people in the past um, and, you know, being very cognizant um, of sort of those red flags, really, you know, doing a good job as far as avoiding that in people, but maybe almost to an extreme degree, having a little too much discernment, being a little too guarded, having your walls a little too firmly in place um, to where, you know, you're very quickly sort of dismissing potential romantic partners or you've kind of developed this sort of distorted mindset that love is only leading to loss. Um, there's a yearning though within you, that yearning for partnership, that yearning for companionship. With this Ace of Cups, you may have recently or will soon meet somebody that sparks your interest. Maybe you've gone through kind of a drought in love. You've been single for a while. You've had some wounds with that Nine of Wands that you've needed to heal. This time alone, um, this time kind of in your own energy, maybe being single or again, not having anyone you really connect with very deeply or, or for very long. Um, it's gifted you this time to really go within um, to kind of unpack some of the the things that you've been through in love before how that shaped you um, in in both positive and you know kind of distorted ways um, and really kind of the work maybe you've done within yourself also that you have reached this point with the ace of swords you have freed yourself to some degree or at that point of being ready to discontinue that period of introspection that single period um, that period of having to spend a lot of time within to go back over things to inventory learning lessons um, and again with somebody who is just newly come into your energy a new person um, or somebody you will meet in the not too distant future that is going to really um, spark that interest within you they're going to really you know give you this kind of glimpse that you know perhaps this could turn into something really good the satisfaction somebody you really enjoy spending time with um, this can even be if there's nobody new in your energy that you know this is something that you really you know a feeling almost of frustration because you have this yearning this want for companionship for for happiness for success Success in love, but feeling very thwarted in that, um, feeling very much that you know you're unable to connect with people um, on your level with this judgment, feeling almost that you might be kind of cursed and loved or, or doomed to be alone for the rest of your life, um, and so you know, kind of putting out that call to source, um, putting out that call to spirit to kind of send you that person, you know, wondering where is my person? Where is my one? Where is my true love? Um, you know, you've done all this work within yourself. You've taken time for yourself. And, you know, there's almost a sense of impatience of, of when is this going to happen? Um, is this ever going to happen? Was all of this work in vain? Maybe for some of you, even kind of looking back on a past relationship um, and really feeling this tendency to think that that was your missed opportunity. That was the boat that you missed or that you, you know, through some wounding in yourself had sabotaged and this fear that might be setting in that, you know, the the time for love is over for you. Uh, maybe the point that you are at in your life, the, the stage you are at in your life, maybe you're older, maybe you're somebody who's been divorced or has just had like a series of, of kind of um, relationships that haven't worked out. People around you have kind of settled down into these happy and content relationships and you're still finding yourself single. You're still finding yourself unable to really connect with someone or, or kind of maintain that relationship. And so there's a little bit of this hopelessness, again, this feeling of sort of being alone, trying to come to terms with that as best as you can, reaching a point of acceptance about that, of trust without that, or about that, that this is, that this is for a reason. 
you've been guided down this path, um, you know, trying as best as you can to trust in this divine timing, but also again, kind of this, this sense of impatience with that. If this is a new person then that is coming into your life, there's this urge to really lean into that, to, see the, to seeing this person as, you know, the opportunity to maybe rebirth some dreams that you had of love in the past. Um, somebody who could really help to kind of, um, in a way, undo the damage that you've sustained from um, kind of disappointing situations and romance through the creation of fond memories. Somebody who can help you to um, kind of rewrite that script for yourself. Somebody who represents kind of that other side of the coin from maybe some toxic um, or low vibrational partners that you have dealt with. And so there's this urge within you, this, this pull within you to kind of give this a chance to let this person in, to let your guard down a little bit. Um, but there's some uncertainty as well, this kind of fear of not wanting to repeat these patterns. Um, it may have had a, an immense cost upon you emotionally and in other ways to really pick yourself back up um, from circumstances of the past or to really rebuild yourself or kind of reprogram your ideas of love, maybe investing a lot in self-love, in the self. And so you're very protective of that. You covet that, um, this place of serenity you have reached within you. Um, and so there's this this yearning, this want, this need for partnership, for a person to be with you, someone to share that with, someone to share your earthly life with, someone to share that cup of love with, um, but really being kind of skeptical that, you know, anyone is able to kind of meet you at your vibration, that anything good can be sustained, or even as it turns out, you know, with a with a new person that comes into your to your world or somebody you've recently met, there there is this kind of fear and hesitation um, of if things going poorly, um, sort of this sense of maybe falling back into those, that kind of fear, that old habit or that pattern that you were in before, or, you know, almost like these, um, not even red flags coming up, but red herrings coming up where you're starting to um, kind of see or anticipate disaster or negativity where it's not there. So, you know, maybe kind of reading a little too much into what this person is saying, um, you know, having um, a little too steep of obstacles and barriers and tests that they must um, kind of pass or, or go through in order to be allowed deeper into the sanctuary of your heart. Um, so definitely some struggle you might be having or could be facing in the near future when this new person comes in, um, really reaching out for guidance and, and praying about this, praying for the one to find you, praying for true love to come in. Um, trying as best as you can to open your heart to the idea of love again, but then when that arrives, almost um, kind of clamming up or, or feeling a little bit of resistance or, or kind of fear about if this is truly trustworthy, if this if this is something of integrity, or is this just kind of, um, you know, is the wool being pulled over your eyes yet again um, by a partner that will kind of reveal another face of themselves that will only sort of diminish the work that you have um you know, concentrated a lot of your time and effort on on doing within yourself to rebuild yourself, to learn to love yourself, to to set stronger boundaries, um, to learn to value and appreciate yourself more. So I'm gonna take a look at these cards now, and this will be the guidance from your higher self about this situation, group two. Okay, and we have I know that every I know that for every door in life that closes, a new one opens around the corner. I am optimistic. So your higher self is really encouraging you to remain hopeful that love will find you. Um, if you still find yourself single, if nobody's on the horizon, if it seems that nobody's coming or you're, you're really unable to um, kind of meet anyone that you resonate with, you're really being tasked at this point in time. Um, you know, it could be a very challenging time. This is a period of growth for you um, to, in whatever way, even if it's just an ember, to keep that seed of hope alive within you. Um, you've done a lot of really good work on yourself. You've been through a lot in terms of romance, in terms of difficulties in the past, and there is reward for you. Um, the work that you've done to transcend cycles within yourself, to recognize things within yourself and kind of neutralize um, these behaviors or to at least become cognizant of maybe a trend or a pattern of people that you are attracting stemming from some wound within you. All of that hard work will pay off. Um, you can trust in love. You can trust in your discernment. Um, this is something to where you're armed with the wisdom to know better. Um, but at a certain point, you know, you you're kind of you need to sort of open that door a little bit. You need to kind of lean into trust. Um, you know, not really seeking to not 
necessarily punish new people that come into your life for sort of the residue or the harm that was done by others to you. Um, this is really, again, this encouragement that there is new love for you. There's a new type of person, the work you've done on yourself and you're continuing to do to raise your vibration. Um, it is emanating a different type of field than you were emanating before. Um, and that's being responded to. You're magnetizing in somebody who can meet you at that level, um, who will honor your boundaries, who will respect you and love you in all the ways you deserve. Um, but also trusting in that discernment that if you feel that those boundaries and you know those needs of yours are not being met, you do have the strength and the tools to walk away from those things, to close those doors back up, um, to exercise self-love both as a process of giving and receiving. And we also have everything is as you've created. All you create offers you lessons in life. So this is really talking about this period of, of being single, um, this period of being alone, not really having any good prospects of love on the horizon. Um, or even if this is somebody new, this hesitancy that you have. Um, all of this is for a larger purpose. If it's the scenario where you're finding yourself single with no new prospects in love in the foreseeable future, um, this time and space that you've been gifted, there's work that you have been able to do or you're being asked to do within you. Um, um, to really take the time to sift through some of that pain, sift through some of that baggage, discover the ways in which um, kind of these less than desirable experiences in, the, in romance in the past, how those things might have distorted your perception, how these things might be hardening your heart overly or leading to this pessimism with that eight of swords, seeking to free yourself from these things, forgiving yourself um, for entertaining situations that were not in accordance with your highest good, um, situations and people that did not honor you that did not cherish you that did not respect you when you forgive yourself first and foremost you liberate yourself um, from that dense energy energy of guilt and shame and when you do that you open yourself up um, to experiencing and, and emanating new kind of vibrations a new more uplifted um, kind of flow of energy comes to you and goes forth from you um, the situation right now it's it's definitely um, it's this liminal space that you find yourself in and it's here for a reason it's here for your healing and that can be very natural to feel that impatience to feel that you know you've done all the work where's the reward um, and so again you're being invited to really trust that it's coming to continue Continue to diligently um, care for yourself, love yourself, nurture yourself. Even the trigger that's coming in as far as impatience, trying to unpack that a little bit. Where is that stemming from? Some kind of fear of missing out. Um, how much are you really kind of looking around you and maybe projecting ideas of happiness and contentment on to other people that you're seeing and feeling yourself at a lack for that? Um, kind of taking that wider perspective and realizing that, you know, everybody, all couples have their own shares of, of problems and maybe especially in our in our age of social media when you know people they'll put their best foot forward they're going to put the pictures up on social media of the fun times of the of the vacations the the gatherings the smiles they're not going to photograph and really publish um, you know the times where one person's giving the other the silent treatment or you know there's there's deep and compounding um, you know incongruities between people there's deceptions both of self of each other it's facades it's needs that aren't being met these are the the things that are going on you know that go on kind of beneath the surface that you're not necessarily seeing so even taking some time to kind of unplug from that not compare your situation or your life to others it's never too late for love to find you there's no expiration date on that um, you know if you're somebody who is interested in uh, having children biologic children um, fathering children or, or carrying children um, yes there can be like a biological quote expiration date to that and depending on how old you are you might be nearing that and that's something you know that can be a fear then that you're being called to really come and come to terms with come to accept that you know quite potentially maybe you won't have children in this lifetime but maybe it's something to where you can be kind of a, a surrogate parent an aunt or an uncle to you know a sibling's children to friends children there's always the potential to adopt children 
There's always the ability to kind of mentor and work with youth. There's other ways, you know, there's there's pets that can become like our children. Um, you know, you can, you can even have plant babies, um, you know, raise a garden. There's other ways to nurture and to express that, that kind of mothering or that fathering urge within yourself. Um, you know, not necessarily coming to this resolution that it's too late, it will never happen, but coming to terms with that, that fear within yourself. What is the stem of, of that? Um, kind of if that event comes to pass or that, that kind of time period, that biological clock expires, your life will go on. And kind of looking at that, trying to sort of plan and prepare for what el what other ways can you invest that desire to kind of nurture and create. Maybe it's a creative endeavor. Maybe it's channeling that pain and that frustration into some kind of art, um, some kind of writing, something of beauty that can help to inspire others. Um, other ways to saturate yourself and emit that kind of a vibration in a way other than maybe giving birth or creating a child physically. Um, if this is, you know, something where it's a new person that you've met, um, this kind of fear and trepidation you have, this is this opportunity to kind of acknowledge that, unpack that, um, and really coax yourself beyond that, that kind of barrier, that wall within you, understanding you have done a lot of important work on yourself, that, you know, the only way that you can experience true love is to take a risk on true love. If you keep yourself closed down and kind of sequestered away, then you'll never know what is waiting for you out there. And we also have time to evolve decisions. It's not a negative situation, but a necessary one. Having the awareness to see it from your soul's perspective that you chose much of this before you incarnated is needed. This releases the victimhood mentality and pulls back your power. We must go through trials and tribulations as an opportunity to evolve. How you choose to interpret the situation hinges on your growth or not. So again, this crossroads period that you are at um, to kind of continue to dwell in that energy of anxiety of, you know, maybe entering into a little hopelessness that, you know, love will never find you. You're doomed to be alone forever. It's too late. Love's not in the cards for you, whatever it might be. Um, you're really being tasked to either continue to perpetuate that cycle, which will generate results almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy in according to accordance to that, um, or to really break free, take a chance in faith that what you are experiencing experiencing at this point in time, this is a very necessary period to free yourself from some of the limiting beliefs, free yourself from um, kind of the residual leftovers of what you have experienced with partners in the past, the disappointment, time that you may have invested in, in people or in situations, maybe even a marriage to have that, you know, go awry to end in divorce, to have that relationship collapse, understanding that there were lessons to be gained from that. Um, it's a journey back to self. It's a journey to self-love. You've been gifted this time in this space is an opportunity to really get to know yourself, get to know what resonates with you, what you want, um, set that standard. And, you know, you can really direct other people to that and kind of stick to wanting them to adhere to that by being that living example, treating yourself the way you want others to treat you. That self-talk, which can then set that bar for how others will talk to you, how others will respond to you, taking the time to nurture yourself, filling your own cup until the universe delivers you somebody who can kind of match that cup where there can be a reciprocity that occurs. Um, if this is somebody also that this is new and you're, you're kind of hesitant to really open up to give this a chance. Again, there's that that energy of decisions, that crossroads where you're being tasked. You know, the universe has provided you this gift. There's an inclination. There's something within you that, you know, has this feeling that this could be different. This person might be who you've been waiting for. But there's that hesitation, that uncertainty, that kind of residue from what you've been through in the past and the work you've done within yourself, this process of healing and picking yourself back up, rebuilding yourself that you might be limiting yourself. You might be kind of pushing away opportunities opportunities a little bit of self-sabotage happening. And so again, being tasked to identify those walls and barriers of fear, that's not necessarily saying, you know, jump in and open up completely, but take small steps to, you know, creating a little more intimacy between you and this person, um, getting to know this person, maybe even expressing some of these fears, bringing those things out on the table, establishing those lines of communication, um, deep and thorough communication, which kind of sets that precedent for, you know, what the relationship can then be built 
built on. And by doing that, you are then able to recognize how someone is able to honor and meet you and receive your needs. And to, you know, through getting more information and information in the form of experience of kind of trial and error, you're able to really then kind of sift beneath sort of this, you know, the surface appearance of things or this inclination, this, this nudge that you have from within you. And you're able to decipher and unpack that a little more and see, you know, what kind of a lesson is this? It feels like you've learned a lot of lessons through some negative experiences in love. And this feels like the universe is letting you know that now's the time to start learning, learning lessons through positive experiences in love, constructive lessons about love as opposed to the destructive lessons that you had um, kind of been going through or had been a theme previously. And we also have self-sabotage. When you learn to get out of your own way, there will be no stopping you. Most of the time, it's not others who prevent you from achieving your true goals. It's that inner voice that derails those carefully woven plans. So that is a wonderful closing message for you about this from your higher self. Group two, this is really talking about, you know, asking you to recognize um, that some of your prayers in a certain way are being answered. Um, energies that you have been emitting are now being returned to you in the form of a more uplifted vibration in terms of the self-love you've been investing. You've been putting this time into cultivating within yourself, nurturing yourself, and you're now kind of receiving that love back in other forms. And it can be very natural to kind of question that, the otherness of that, almost the sense of what you're wishing for arriving and, and kind of this this fear hesitation about is this too good to be true is this really it or even that pessimism about you know setting that narrative that story that belief system that is then emanated out where you feel you're doomed in love you're meant to be alone forever that creates a certain vibration that you then send that signal out it calls in resonant signals to you so your higher self is really encouraging you to you know look at this unpack this a little bit seek to identify and kind of neutralize within yourself any ways in which you're almost pushing away the the gift of love that is being offered to you by the universe um, or the ways in which you might be almost keeping that at bay or not seizing the opportunity to call it in rather by maintaining kind of that very jaded and closed off heart space that very kind of negative or hopeless view on love um, you are worthy and deserving of healthy and reciprocal love in this lifetime um, and it's something where you know the time and manner of that coming into your existence it's due in, in part to a lot of other outside factors and things you don't have control over that you can't predict what you can do is work on yourself work on elevating your vibration um, addressing fears and transcending those things believing that you are worthy and deserving of love and that the right partner, someone who can love you in the way in which you deserve to be loved, will find you when the time is right. So I'm going to get you some little affirmations to kind of close this up. Group two. Okay, and we have, I can, I accept I cannot save everyone. I choose to help those who are open to assistance. So this is really, again, um, kind of directing your focus back to that discernment, recognizing that you have the tools within you to be able to identify kind of a repetition of patterns, um, a certain kind of character, a theme or an archetype of, you know, a partner in the past, or a, re a repeating series of partners that had led to heartbreak and um, kind of an erosion of your self-esteem to not hold that against new love that comes in. Trust that the work you've done on yourself to move away from those patterns, to break those cycles, to say enough, no more, that this has created a subtle change within you, trusting that. Um, but at the same time, also when those alarm bells go off within you, taking a step back, even just a small step to really check in with yourself and see are these legitimate fears or is this um, just kind of the ego mind trying to, you know, kind of keep me in a narrative that once was the case but that I have evolved beyond so get one more affirmation for you group two okay and we have dare take a risk and fly so that is a beautiful closing message for you and again just really encouraging you to open your heart even in a small way even just rewriting that story in your mind that you are worthy and deserving of love if this is a new person who has come in or is soon to come in for you that you might be a little hesitant about taking a chance on you're really being guided here to take that small step forward open your heart just even a crack and let that light of love seep into you to fill you fill you with this reassurance that you need um, definitely you know opening up 
up to this person, anyone new that comes in. You don't have to give them your whole backstory, but you know, talking through these fears, talking through that hesitation, expressing clearly what it is that you need, the reassurance that you need, um, you know, things that you're not willing to put up with, what it is you're looking for, creating that dialogue. So the two of you, you know, you start off on the same page and you continue to build and evolve that relationship into whatever it turns into, a friendship, a romance, something lasting, you know, only time will tell. But it's something where you set that foundation of integrity. You set that foundation of transparency, truth with the Ace of Swords here. Um, there's a beautiful chapter of love that is waiting to unfold for you. I feel for you know most of you, this is you've been through some difficult things in love in the past. You've learned a lot of difficult lessons through disappointment. And the universe and your higher self is really encouraging you to focus on a more positive horizon. That you are now in entering the stage where the lessons and the things you will learn is through that positive experience of love. Building yourself back up um, you know kind of in the exterior way and what is you know matched and met by another partner that is comparable to the ways in which you have reconstructed yourself you built yourself back up from the inside out so now is the time to receive to get very excited about love because it is on the horizon for you it's coming in you will not be alone forever your one is out there for you and they are making their way to you or for some of you may have already recently just kind of entered your equation and so this can be a confirmation to you know open up a little kind of trust in this and to explore the connection further and see where it can lead so those are your messages group two I hope they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading if you like the video please give it a thumbs up comment subscribe or share if you'd like a personal reading I offer them through my Etsy shop and there's a link in the description box of the video for that I also sell handmade jewelry and some divination tools in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out as well I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well. Hi, group three. You chose the amethyst cluster along with these cards, which I will take a look at in a minute. This will be the guidance from your higher self. I'm gonna start with some tarot to get a feel for what area of your life your higher self wants to talk about, wants to address, some guidance or some words of reassurance for you. And in this tarot deck, each card has um, a little mantra at the bottom, so I'll read that as I go through them. So we've got the High Priestess. My intuition guides me to the truth. Eight of Swords. I release myself from self-inflicted binds. Ace of Pentacles. I am always rewarded for all I do.
death. I let go and embrace new beginnings. Queen of Cups, I trust my knowing and follow my heart. And Seven of Wands, I actively hold true to my values. So this definitely looks like you may have gone through some kind of a major change, something that had fallen away from your life, had closed out um, in your life. It feels like this might even be in relation to some kind of a belief system or an idea that you had resonated with, something with that Ace of Pentacles that really felt um, like a truth to you. This could even be a perception of self, um, something that you would come to believe about yourself, who you are, what your role in this lifetime is, um, maybe even in relation to others around you, something even pertaining to um, to love or, or people that you know are, are very close to you that can be a platonic love, a family love, something that you really you care about that that was really meaningful to you um, and something maybe through this person's actions or some information that you've got, gotten or some kind of a personal evolution that has happened within you. You're no longer resonating with what you used to, um, what was true for you, what you were so just really willing to defend um, and really were identifying with that has shifted that has changed you may have gone through some kind of a spiritual awakening with this high priestess here in the process of that um, to where things in your outside world are sh are changing they're shifting they're falling away um, a lot of kind of of chaos could be happening um, just in terms of things that are falling away maybe things to do with work um, things to do with how you spend your time maybe even friends that you're no longer resonating with um, kind of being at odds with your family or even at odds with a romantic partner someone you've been with maybe for a long time that you're just you're not feeling that connection anymore. You're not resonating with them. You two are just not on the same page. It feels like things on multiple levels kind of all sort of filtering in and, and kind of um, coming to a conclusion all at once. There might be a sense also with this Eight of Swords and this Ace of Pentacles of just being um, very kind of trapped and lonely in the circumstances you find yourselves in now not having a lot of people that you resonate with at the the kind of heart level at the soul level not having a lot of people that are on your vibration um, maybe you've gotten onto a spiritual path again through that um, kind of spiritual awakening energy with the high priestess here and there's just not a lot of people in your material world or surroundings that can understand um, your interests that understand or accept even the shift and change within you people around you could really be fighting that and resisting that that evolution within yourself um, people who are just not compatible in terms of what they are choosing to focus on, what they are choosing to invest in, even their belief systems. And so there's this energy of just really um, almost being on the outside, looking in, um, feeling very almost like changes that have occurred that you can't go back from, um, but not seeing a way forward at this point in time, very kind of an isolated and alone energy where you've got the seed of truth. You've got something, a new belief system, something new, a new part of you, a new version of yourself that is, you know, it's, it's there. It's kind of stirring in the darkness and the surface um, below this new life um, that maybe you have even voluntarily relinquished a lot of other things in relationships. You've kind of cut people off, moved away, let things fall away from your life. Um, but you're yet to really see the seeds of that effort come into bloom, come into fruition. Um, with the Eight of Swords, definitely this kind of liminal space, almost this sense of holding your breath, um, kind of waiting for your soul tribe to magnetize to you, not really having a lot of people around that you can um, really understand or, you know, that understand you. Maybe people that you're connecting with at a distance um, through, you know, virtual means, online, um, groups or communities, things of that nature, but nobody in your tangible physical world or very, very few people. If anything, it's maybe just like one person, but this feels like the energy of you know just very few people around you who you resonate with who you're able to you know really engage in meaningful interactions with who kind of share your same views and goals and beliefs and and interests even so it's very much an energy of being alone um, in a certain capacity um, and kind of that loneliness on the on the spiritual path on the ascension journey that really happens um, periods of time almost like um, the hermit where we must go in um, there are others that can't really follow us 
us down that that journey into self. It's a time of self reflection. It's a time of solitude, um, to where we we really you know seek and find. And here she's got that book with the key. We really seek and find that wisdom within. We're tapping into our own akashic record, um, either deliberately or even energetically. This information's kind of filtering through to us, activating us, upgrading us. Um, and there's a lot of changes, a lot of shifts. It's like the with the eight of swords, almost this idea of being in a chrysalis. To a certain degree, you could be trying to kind of fight this, um, trying to hold on to things in your life that are wanting to fall away. Um, maybe a lot of nostalgia is going on. You're kind of at that point in the journey where you've gotten so far into it that you're starting to look back and regret for, for what once was that has fallen away. You can't go back to it. You can't go back in time. There's only forward progress um, and the, from the place that you find yourself at now. Um, so it could be almost like this energy of a crossroads as well with the death. Um, kind of where do you go from here? so many different options um, you know maybe this inclination to kind of go back to sleep as much as you can but finding that very difficult or very impossible to kind of rever reverse course um, maybe you've been reaching out to people from the past kind of making that effort to fit yourself back into the mold you have you have long since outgrown and it's proving very difficult for you very lonely for you um, but then there's just kind of what is this all leading to this question about how far does this go where does this go from here what's the point of all of it um, so a lot of questioning you could be experiencing a lot of signs coming through, a lot of downloads, a lot of psychic activity or psychic activations that could be kind of overwhelming for you as well. Kind of this input coming in, this very profound empathy where you're sensing and feeling things on a very subtle level, on a vibrational level, and it could be leading some to some kind of confusion about that, a sense of being trapped, a sense of not really um, being able to kind of escape all that input, maybe wanting a lot of time alone to just kind of shut down and shut away in order to get some kind of peace or Prieve from what you're experiencing, um, not really being sure what the point of it all is or um, kind of what to do with this from this point going forward. So I'm going to take a look at these cards now, group three, and this will be the guidance from your higher self about this situation. Okay, and we have, I know that nothing bad lasts forever. Even when my emotions tell me otherwise, I am never stuck. So this is directly addressing that liminal period you may find yourself in through the process of spiritual awakening and perhaps ego death that is occurring to you um, and around you even. Um, circumstances in your life falling away, belief systems, who you have identified yourself as as a person, uh, maybe for your whole life, and that really shifting your mind, expanding your perceptions, expanding. And this just kind of alludes to that discomfort there. A lot of emotions, a lot of things coming up to be purged, to be cleared, um, things that you are you know tasked at this point to come to terms with so that a new and release so that a new version of yourself can be birthed this is the process of creating that fallow field um, through which the seeds that are planted um, have that room and that opportunity to germinate so again encouragement from your higher self that this period of kind of quiet of solitude this expanse where it seems a lot is falling away not a lot of new is coming in this is very temporary this is all part of that process of rebirth you're sort of clearing the way again kind of um, the imagery of the fallow field clearing the field creating room and space within yourself um, and in physics, we talk about space abhors a vacuum, which means that, you know, as things kind of fall away, it, it won't just be this void forever. It's this space that, you know, then other things, other vibrations, other experiences can magnetize to you, can, can fill that space and will fill that space, will grow from internally, will come about through exterior circumstances. Um, and so definitely in this circumstance to just, you know, really breathe and trust, meditation might also be very crucial for you at this point in time if you don't already have a meditation practice you might want to start one something to really center to really pull yourself down into that physical body that body temple um, to kind of you know as much as possible maybe get out of your mind out of that chatter out of that anxiety not being able to see what's around the bend for you um, a lot of this you know these downloads that are coming in finding some way also to channel and ground that maybe through journaling or artwork um, something that just really kind of brings this out um, um, you know, you're getting a lot of just high, high level energy coming into you, a lot of things changing and shifting, morphing within you, evolving within you on, on different levels, on the physical level, on the etheric level, psychic, spiritual. 
you know, the heart space level, there's a lot of shifts and changes happening. So as much as possible to um, kind of cultivate that garden of tranquility within, visit that place often, um, as often as you need to, not feeling guilty about needing to take time out, um, time away, time to yourself to really just process things, to get, you know, to catch your breath, to get some kind of peace. Um, you might feel this pressure to, you know, not really, you know, hide yourself away. And, and obviously if you feel if it's in, to an unhealthy degree, then you know make the effort to to socialize even if that's just online on on community boards where you're actively participating you're in some way engaging with others exchanging ideas but understanding that part of this process that's going on for you it is very intense it is very heavy and you will require that time to yourself to really um, digest everything that's happening and turn that um, into wisdom and we also have be clear on what you want put action to your goals, make them a reality. So this is talking about that fallow field, that space that is being created. This is the perfect energy from which to manifest. Um, really shifting your focus from what is gone to what you hope to create, to what you hope to experience. Using this time wisely as you're getting to know yourself, um, as parts of yourself are really coming into your awareness, are really coming online and activating. Again, this very potent energy for manifestation. Um, taking time to journal, to you know, kind of dream to kind of look at what what do you want life to look like now now that these other things or other people have kind of drifted away from you you know what is resonating with you what kinds of friends would you want to have what would a, a romantic partner look like for you at this point in time um, if it's a shift in career or jobs what would you like to be doing for a living um, investing time in dreaming about these things planning about these things you know investigating these things as much as possible making whatever preparations you can um, and that this is something that you know this point you find yourself in now again this is with this energy of I'm never stuck this will not last forever there is a new chapter that will unfold for you and so during this period of time you know you're you're doing a great service to yourself to use this time wisely to really plan for what experiences you want to have in your future to do whatever work is necessary whatever you can at this point in time to even just shift into that mindset of hopefulness of you know just gaining some kind of perspective of quieting yourself um, to just kind of sit and breathe and and flow through and surrender to this process knowing that it's all for a greater purpose of your growth and you know know eventually in time this this feelings and the intensity of it will subside and a new version of yourself will be um, birthed out of this kind of energy of change we also have old wounds patterns we attract what we need to heal often we find ourselves attracting the same type of people or situations that are not best for us until we choose to find the common denominator of what we need to heal and release the cycle will continue Go within to heal the pain layer by layer and to find joy again. So again, this, this concept of using this time wisely, things that are being cleared away for you. This is a wonderful time to introspect. What were some of the common themes? What were some of the common denominators? What are some of these things that have fallen away from your life, even if that's people? Um, what wasn't in resonance with you? What is your truth? What is your authenticity? What types of relationships would you want to have? You know, if you are, are wanting reciprocity, what are some ways that you can, you know, exercise boundaries and also, you know, invest more fully in connections and people that you care about? Um, starting first and foremost with yourself, you know, allowing yourself that space and time, that downtime, while also, you know, you're you're investing and, and kind of giving yourself that love, that, that tenderness, that compassion for what it is you're going through. A lot of things might be surfacing as well for you in terms of emotions or memories, and this is a period of catharsis that your higher self wants you to know is very necessary. It's clearing a lot of this out, the energies of that. It's giving you and gifting you this perspective so that you are able to identify patterns um, that may have kind of been reoccurring through different um, themes and situations and people in your past. So that moving forward, when these new opportunities, when new doors open for you, you're able to kind of be armed with that sense of discernment to be able to identify kind of those larger themes, sort of those red flags that give way to a specific specific type of person, a specific type of experience with everything that's happening in your energetic body and maybe some kind of empathic elements of you that are that are heightening or that are coming online, learning to kind of unpack those things. Um, 
you know, pick those things apart, really analyze those things and recognizing them as kind of the physiological cues that something is off energetically, learning to decipher what resonates versus what, you know, maybe isn't for your highest good. And so using this time to kind of get to know yourself on that deep level, kind of these cues and, and nudges that your, your physical body, your, your mental body, your emotional body gives you can be very helpful in moving forward um, to have different experiences, to be able to set better boundaries that kind of repels people or repels experiences that, you know, are maybe limited or, or signs of kind of um, patterns within yourself that you have outgrown, that you are no longer wanting to replicate that, you know, through this spiritual awakening process you've come to find don't really resonate with you on the highest self level. Um, and so again, this idea of this all being very temporary, this being almost a period of preparation, um, things happening. It's kind of like the idea of when you make a soup or a stew and you put all the ingredients in the pot um, and then it has to kind of sit there and, and sort of um, simmer and, and all the flavors have to develop and there's different elements and you know that takes time. This is not something immediate. This is not pop it in the microwave and it comes out. Um, so using this time to really just you know kind of dig in there to all these different aspects. Unpack whatever you can. Balance that out with times where you're focusing on things that are more lighthearted. You're focusing on kind of building aspects of yourself up while also then kind of focusing on things you maybe need to work on within yourself. And we also have embrace the moment. Embrace this day, this very moment. Think positively today and repel those negative thoughts. Try not to judge yourself or others. This may be harder than you think. What is actually happening is that you're changing your energy. So this is a beautiful kind of final um, word of guidance and advice from your higher self group three that really is confirming this kind of process of awakening and ascension that you are going through. For some of you, you may have had your spiritual awakening a while ago and you're, you're kind of wondering what's happening. Um, and this to me is really just feeling like another phase of your ascension. It's almost like a, a mini awakening, kind of a mini dark night of the soul, some other layer of yourself that is needing to sort of fall away. There's something new that is needing to be shifted and, and birthed within you kind of a widening of who you have become. Um, so taking heart in that, maybe reflecting on sort of the sensations or experiences you had, if you you know already had a spiritual awakening or several of them, you've been on this ascension journey for a while, relatively speaking, and you know really looking to that, looking to that past and that perspective that you know in time that subsided, in time the intensity of that, what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, you, you learn to kind of deal with that, to kind of flow with that, to sort of swim in those waters of self. Um, really again, you Utilizing this period of time, what you're experiencing, this, you know, kind of wide open space where you feel that, you know, a lot is falling away, but you haven't yet experienced kind of the birth of the new, um, that this is kind of that time to do that extra little cleanup to kind of get in there in the grooves and the cracks. You know, if you're, you're kind of, um, it's this idea of almost like if you have grout in a shower um, and you're getting in there with that little toothbrush, just kind of in all those little nooks and crannies, um, that this is something where you may have done a lot of major work, a lot of major cleanup, but um, using this point in time to to really get in there kind of in those in those deeper areas those kind of subcutaneous surfaces um, within your energetic body or within your psyche that might have been overlooked or little things that are coming up even things you may have thought you have worked on or released that are resurfacing in some level another facet or aspect of that that's really calling you to pay attention there's something else you need to release this time of kind of endings is again clearing the way for the newness to be birthed. Um, so making sure to balance as well the time that you're spent kind of debriefing yourself, getting rid of that that excess, what no longer fits, what no longer serves, kind of gaining the wisdom and, and discarding the rest. Balancing that out with periods of time where you applaud yourself. Um, you applaud your soul for having chosen this journey. You applaud yourself for your bravery and your courage, your fortitude and your perseverance, the gentleness, the love and the compassion that you have for self. Um, you know, really praise yourself with and recognizing how difficult this process and this journey is. Um, little accomplishments, whether that's, you know, that you, you manage to smile for the day, you know, you manage to, to laugh or focus on something good instead of everything that was going wrong. It's these little bits of accomplishment um, that when you focus on that, you kind of shift that vibration into one of joy. And that really adds up over time and can help you, um, you know, just kind of focus on what can, what can come, what can become over what was and what was maybe lost or has fallen away. So I'm going to get a few little affirmation cards for you, group three, to close this reading out. Okay, and we have, I am a conscious creator of the energy around me. 
So this is really tying into that idea of clearing away, clearing away the old, making space for the new to come, um, and trying as much as possible to kind of quiet yourself down from focusing on everything that is not around you, that is not here yet, um, everything that was, that is no more. Um, being very present in this moment, in this space, feeling into your body, um, searching deep within yourself. What do you hope to achieve? What do you hope to experience? Um, you know, kind of with law of attraction where you're setting that vibration of expectation, coming to believe that it is yours, that you already have it, that is, it is already on its way to you following that up with action, small steps to make that a reality. That can be something, you know, holding this vision in your mind and making um, kind of a vision board of that, journaling about that, um, making some kind of a creative endeavor, writing something about it, uh, making artwork, or you know, even investigating maybe places you want to move to, different things you want to do for, for a career, maybe seeking um, answers online, seeking community online, people you can resonate with, little steps that kind of shift that. It's the vibration that's then followed up with action. Um, and so this is definitely, it's a beautiful time of creation that at this point you might just be seeing the face of it that could be kind of the destruction phase the phase where everything is cleared out um, but what you're not seeing kind of below the surface in those subcutaneous levels and that that kind of darkness beneath the soil um, there are seeds that are being planted there's movement that is happening um, and in time those things will definitely kind of come out into the light they will come to your awareness you will see these things in front of you you will experience these things vibrationally energetically within you so you know being very deliberate taking the time you need being very compassionate passionate and gentle with yourself as you kind of navigate this process. So I'm going to get one more of these little affirmations for you, group three. Okay, and we have beauty, dare to be tender and strongly vulnerable. So that is a beautiful closing message that's really, um, it's encouraging you to look at um, kind of the beauty you are unearthing within yourself through this process. This authenticity of the soul um, that may have been obscured by kind of fitting into certain parameters or you know even just a life that you know wasn't up to your fullest potential in whatever way that resonates for you and the ways in which you have courageously kind of moved through this process you've chosen to engage in this process um, kind of on the other side and the flip side of some of those more sort of difficult and heavy experiences and emotions there is beauty waiting to be born from that you're birthing a more beautiful and authentic a more sensitive and compassionate passionate version of self really taking the time to appreciate yourself, to love yourself, to nurture yourself, to be gentle with yourself. That can help you through this process. Um, it's not a process that will last forever, although it can feel that way. Um, you know, a minute can feel like an hour, can feel like a year if you're going through a very, you know, heavy and dark kind of lonely period. Um, but just kind of those small reassurances in whatever way possible. If you don't even have kind of the, the strength or the fortitude to do that, just cradling yourself, allowing yourself to really feel what Whatever it is you're feeling, honoring those feelings, not trying deliberately to, you know, suppress anything or to, you know, overly just kind of focus on, um, you know, kind of toxic positivity. But we need to kind of have that contrast sometimes. There needs to be kind of downs to go with ups. Um, there needs to be kind of the shadow to go with the light to provide that contrast, to provide a, a well-rounded, a, a balanced um, kind of perspective or, or a person. Life is neither black nor white. It's kind of like shades of gray. Ray, um, that are achieved through the weaving of those those kind of polarities so this is definitely the time to um, as much as possible appreciate yourself love yourself um, and really feel your feelings that saying you have to feel it to heal it that is very true um, and it doesn't mean to just kind of sit and wallow. Um, it means to honor and acknowledge these things and, you know, to really kind of put that call out there, open yourself up to, to guidance and inspiration, doors and windows of opportunity that open, um, that can provide you kind of an exit from that, that can, you know, give you that kind of opportunity to gain the wisdom to where you no longer need to sit in that vibration. You're then able to transcend that. You're then able to experience something else and you're able to appreciate um, what you had experienced previously for what it was, for what it taught you, for the things that it taught you that you don't want to replicate, you don't want to experience, you don't want to have or call into your life and your surroundings going forward. So a powerful point of transformation that's going on for you, group three, um, a lot of intense kind of feelings and emotions and energies may be coming in, but you will definitely get through this um, on the other side of kind of everything that is happening, this wide open space that you feel. There's something really beautiful and wonderful that starts predominantly with kind of a new and improved um, 
um, an upgraded version of yourself that is taking place beneath the scenes, behind the scenes, um, kind of out of sight, but but you know, kind of deep within the recesses of your mind and your perception. And when the time is right, you know, that will definitely that will burst forth and you'll feel so much better from whatever it is that you are experiencing and feeling at this point in time. So those are your messages, group three. I hope they resonated with you and that you enjoyed the reading. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, or share. If you'd like a personal reading, I offer them through my Etsy shop, and there's a link in the description box of the video for that. I also sell handmade jewelry and some divination tools in my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out as well. I hope to see you again in another reading. Please take care and be well.